he's going to be prosecuted for an offence. He's got a volatile nature, this guy. And Gary calls for reinforcements. Tango 5, Tango 5 to base. I don't want to hear anything out of you, Buster. Shut up the camera. Oh, I was going to say that. Up. That's enough. As the crew heads back to the boat, Gary's worried. Now, George, don't the attack the cameraman, all right? George, Hi. don't attack the cameraman. For Gary and his colleagues, this afternoon is the culmination of several months' work. After an extensive investigation, fishery officers have decided to seize the vessel involved. He's going to be prosecuted for an offence. Um, I imagine he'll, he'll get a little angry about that. He's got a volatile nature, this guy, so we'll just have to see how he handles himself. June of this year, we got a report from some amateur fishermen involving large amounts of snapper floating uh, on the surface in the Eastern Bay of Plenty. And based on that information, we're pretty sure that uh, this is the vessel that was involved in the dumping. And uh, if they think it's going to the Crown, and uh, they can panic, and they can do silly things like sink it or steam it away and try and hide it and such like. So when those aspects are involved, then rationale goes out the window and anything could happen. Tango 5, Tango 5 to base. And Gary calls for reinforcements. If you and Mark can proceed down here, we can get this done. With backup on the way, he heads down to the boat. G'day, George. No. <laughs> this, no is, um, me, this is uh, this is a guy that's taken some footage for a coast watch for our program. Don't put it on me. Well, he's, he can Don't put it where he likes. Me. He's in a public place, so. Hey, the, the jetty belongs to me too. He's on no, it doesn't. The jetty belongs to the marina. Get this plonk in a movie's camera somewhere else, Gary, so we can do the job. This, this guy's here just doing his job, and let's, uh, do, let's do the job. To get the and and this guy has to be with us, so you know. And we are going to do the job, George. Do you, do you want to use your boat again? Yes. You do. Yeah. Okay. So you, you'll need to bond it back. What's the team doing here, George? I think that's irrelevant, but anyway. Well, yeah. Well, they're just coming to. You don't know what they're doing here. What are you guys doing? I'm running around. He's hanging on to that rail. rail. Come on, Gary, let's get the job done. Come on, George. Click, click. Come on, come on. I just want to know what the team's doing here. Are you going fishing or what? They want to go fishing. They want to go fishing, they yeah. Go fishing. yeah. Well, are, they, are they getting ready to head away? They, yes. Are they? Yes. Are they going to go nice up, are they? They want to be ready tonight. Yeah, OK. Well, it's important we get the bond okay. signed. Yeah. The boat's seized, OK. And it's pending that um, investigation into that uh, snapper dumping situation. Like to the snapper dumping. You know what we're talking about. I don't know of it. Yeah, OK. Look out, fella. Excuse me, Budster. What? No, you got to get a close-up, bud. <laughs> what's George, what's no, no, he's no he's getting a close-up. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So you just, you just wait there for me, George, and I'll come with you in a moment. These guys just well, got to go on board the boat. Let's make up our mind, bud. Yeah, we know exactly what we're doing. Here. Just stay there. That's you scary. jokers, can you get off the boat, please? <laughs> the boat ceased. Have you, got, have you got your personal gear off the boat? While Gary and George head to the office to sort out the bond papers, the MFish team starts logging everything on board. OK, George. But George isn't in the mood for small talk. Well, here's something that you might not believe, George. I don't want to hear anything out of you, Buster. Shove the camera up your... I was going to say that... up. That's enough. It's just a short drive to the MFish office, where George will sign the bond papers. The extreme of this situation is if you're convicted of this offence, then your vessel is potentially forfeit to the Crown. You understand that? With the paperwork complete, back on the boat, the MFish team have almost finished their inventory. So we're just taking a video record of everything that's on the vessel, so that when we seize the vessel we can be sure of exactly what's here. Yeah, Brad, um, we're just approaching the bridge now, so uh, we'll be there shortly, over. Um, oh no, I'm going to go down and make sure these boys haven't bullsh**ed, shouldn't I? Bullsh**ed? Oh yeah, you yeah, fine, yeah. Probably vlog TV or something. Uh, hey George, George, come here. Let's just wait up here and let them finish, eh? They'll be down in a couple of minutes. Yeah, then we can have a look at the, have a look at the inventory if you want to have a, have a check of it. Hey um, mate. <laughs> mate, look, don't make yourself a star. No he's not, he's just doing a job. Come up here. You're not a star. He's just doing a job, I said. And still George and the crew are unhappy about the cameraman filming them. As the crew heads back to the boat, Gary's worried. Now George, don't attack the cameraman, all right? George, don't attack the cameraman. But the cameraman is still the focus of George's attention. No, he's, he's not a bad guy, George. Well, he might look like Charlie Chaplin, but he's not such a bad character. Have you got the uh, inventories there, guys? George has got his boat bonded back, so perversely it's business as usual for him until MFish can take the case to court. 
oh, the job's done now. We've um, we've seized the boat, bonded it back to um, to the owner. Basically, the fold just proceeds now, so we can uh, we can get on with it and see where we go to from here. George's company, Harvey Fishing Limited, was found guilty of abandoning and failing to report Snapper. The company was fined $3,500. It's a grey day on the Firth of Thames, and a fisheries patrol has just come across a group of fishermen whose boat had been seized the week before, after they'd been caught with far too many Snapper at Kawakawa. Are you guys at Kawakawa Bay on Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Spoke to my friend Shane? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's five people on board. They are legally allowed uh, 45 uh, snapper. After the Kawakawa seizure, the boat had been bonded back to the owner until a decision was made on the penalty. And on this occasion, there are no problems with their catch. Appreciate it. Thank you. But just four days before, at a checkpoint near Kawakawa, it had been a very different story. I'll just confirm that everybody. Heaps of fish here. Right. Okay. What did you use to measure the fish? I've got the thing there. You the got board. a board there? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you're aware of all you so you read your size limits and do you know how yeah. many do you know how many snapper everybody's nine, allowed? Nine each. Nine each? Okay. Are we gonna find any problems? No. No. Sweet. With five people on board, these guys are allowed 45 snapper. And at first, it doesn't look like there's any problem with the number of fish or the minimum size of 27 centimetres. That's a decent size, look at that. It's not bad at all. He's got the big lump on his head, he's an older one. He's an older one. You guys are going to have some work doing the, doing the uh, yeah. gutting and filleting when you get home. But then Shane lifts the mat on the deck of the boat. 39. Okay, Pull them out, boys. Pull them out. Sir, can you stand up and have a look on the edge there, please? What's in the What's in the centre of that boat there? Can you stand up on the edge of the yeah, boat here for that. me? What's in there? There's another cavity in there too. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we'll pull up all, all of right. this. We're going to have a little bit of a count up, and what we'll do is we'll see if it's if it's three times over the legal limit of fish here then um, I'm actually entitled to seize their boat and take it back to the Ministry of Fisheries office. So we'll have a count up and a measure up and we'll see what we've got. For the fishermen, this is all going to mean a long wait on the side of the road. We'll do a count up, take some photos, and then we can inter we can have a chat to everybody. I'll make it 99. All right. Have you got any questions for me at this stage? No? The count reaches 98 snapper and one kawai, but it doesn't end there. We've got some more here too. That's just the back. Can we take a photo of that then? Yeah. yeah. So that's where it was in there. Mm -hmm. We've got the ones that were tucked away. Um, in the battery compartment. Is there any others? Not others. Are you positive about that? Yeah, not others. Uh, okay. Right. okay, we're just going to continue. Have a look. Have a look All right. In the bow. Just yeah, can you just have a look there? Yeah, thank you. The search doesn't find any more fish, but the final count is more than twice the legal limit. Here's the situation. We've basically got 110, 110 plus right. 110 plus one car wipe. Okay. It's not three times. No. So, no However, the vessel was used to conceal them in yep. the commission of the offence. Right. With 110 snapper, these guys are now facing hefty fines, and much will depend on what they have to say when questioned by fishery officers. Do you know how many snapper you all caught today? It must have been a dozen. That's just, you're talking about just you? Yep. Okay, why did you have them concealed under the floor and in the locker where the battery is? And as darkness falls, the interviews reveal that nobody wants to take the blame. I didn't do it, I asked the skipper. So you're saying you didn't do that? No, no. Why did you put them in the boat? Why did you put um, them under there? Between the no answer for that. Sorry? But no answer for that. You've got no answer for that? Were you trying to hide the fish? Aye. Were you trying to hide the fish, the snapper? Yeah. Yes. 
he's been very upfront. It's made the job a lot easier. Um, basically, he's admitted that uh, that they took the excess. He's admitted that he knew what they were doing. Um, he knew that they weren't allowed them, and he couldn't answer why he'd concealed them or put them in the lower compartment around the back of the battery there. So um, I'm just going to have a chat with my colleague. We've still got two others to interview. Um, at this stage, unfortunately, it's looked like we may be um, taking the boat on this occasion um, because of the serious nature of it, uh, the fact that it's concealed, and the f so we'll just see. My guy said that um, he's basically blaming the skipper, skipper. Um, and that yeah, he knew the rules as well, that it was nine. He reckoned he caught about a dozen fish, mm -hmm. um, and the same thing, that they were just going to split the catch between them. I'll just put the rods up under here. The okay? reason that the boat is being seized Okay, is intent to hide or the intent to conceal. Okay, and also the fact that um, we can't attribute yeah. who caught every single fish. Yeah. Okay, so unfortunately at this stage, yeah. the burden is with the, with the, the skipper. skipper, the owner of the boat. What? With the boat on its way to the Auckland Fisheries Office, there's only the tidying up to do, and that involves dealing with 110 snapper. And because health regulations prevent fisheries from distributing the fish, they'll all end up back in the sea. So what happens with the fish now is that we, uh, we basically stab the swim bladder of them all and they get dumped out at sea later on. We've taken photographs of it all. And um, generally judges don't like smelly fish in their courtrooms. <laughs> In the end, fisheries decided against taking the case to court, as the fishermen had less than three times the legal limit. But each of the men on board received a $500 infringement notice for taking excess snapper. You guys counted and measured the snapper? There's no response, but silence isn't going to help these guys. OK, guys, I'm going to ask you, yep. is there any more fish on board the boat? This is your one chance. For an honest answer, sir. Yes. Is there more fish? Yeah. Can you show me where it is, please? Oh, it's under here. Under there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The three guys are probably now wishing they'd stayed at home. The two bins full of snapper had put them over their limit, but what's hidden beneath the deck could cost them their boat. And once again, is there any more fish on board the boat you want to tell me about? There's no more fish? Okay. What's that there in the plastic bag? Is that more fish? Is that more snapper? Yes, it is, isn't it? Just have a bit of a count up first, counting a measure, and then we can go from there. The legal size for snapper is 270 millimetres, and taking juvenile fish like these has a big impact on the future of the fishery. With three people on the boat, the allowable catch is 27 snapper, but there's more than 100 fish here, and some of them are glaringly undersized. You've got 100 odd fish, and you still want to keep that. You're obviously well aware you've got lots of snapper, haven't you? Do you know the limit for snapper? Yes, you do. OK. Who owns yeah. the boat? Your cousin. But it doesn't really matter who owns the boat. The serious nature of the offence as committed by the three men mean that the boat is about to become the property of the Ministry of Fisheries. When the boat goes on the trail, I don't want you to do anything stupid about try and drive away or anything, OK? The men will be formally interviewed in the next few days, but for now they're going home with no fish and with no boat. It was good to catch those guys and get them off the water. Who knows how many times they've been out there and caught 100 plus fish. Uh, well, they won't be for the next few months anyway. Their boat's going to be in our compound. The officers are horrified at the size of this illegal catch. It's a sad end to the night and more than 100 fish will be returned to the sea. What we're doing now is we're just going to uh, steer these fish so they sink and we're going to return them to the sea. The three men were charged with catching excess and undersized snapper. Two of them received sentences of 100 hours of community work and the third received 200 hours. The boat, its trailer and all the fishing gear were confiscated. Yeah. 
The problem Chris has come across is Sonny Rangi, who has come over from West Australia to visit family in Auckland. When Sonny came over from Australia, he'd asked his brother Tommy if he could get hold of a boat to go fishing. But unfortunately, although they're aware of how many snapper they're allowed, they've no idea about size. Of the 12 fish in the bucket, 10 of them are under size. And the way Sonny measures his fish is one of the reasons for the problem. What were you measuring them on? Yeah. Oh, on there. Oh, the red fish is on there. Oh, it's, it's one you can still read it, mate. You're measuring them from, from here? I was measuring from here. No, oh, it's zero here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even a passing knowledge of what's allowed would have convinced Sonny and Tommy that their fish were too small. Um, that's okay, guys. What, what we do now, we'll get some details. We both of you fishing? Yeah. Both fishing. Who, who caught the fish? Or me. I caught here. All right, I'm just going to need to get your picture as well, so stand there and smile. Beautiful. <laughs> Take your hat off if you can, yep. With both the men owning up to having undersized snapper, the fishery team moves on to the business of recording the evidence of what they've found. I'll take a photograph and if you just agree with us that the measurement's the right size. Yeah, yep, yep, no, that's cool. 256. Two, 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 eight, yeah. Two, two, eight, mate. Two thirty-seven. Two thirty-seven. Yep. Two thirty-seven, mate. Yep. Two sixteen. Two sixteen. Two sixty-one. Yep. Two fifty-one. Two forty-four. Two eleven, mate. At two hundred and eleven millimeters, the smallest of the fish is sixty millimeters below the legal size of two hundred and seventy, and neither of the men can come up with a reasonable excuse for what they've done. Uh, my question was, what have you done to make yourself aware of the rules, the fishing rules? Your answer, just looked at the board, didn't look hard enough, didn't take any notice. Is there anything else you would like to add? And you said, not really, we have been caught, undersized, that's all there is to it. Read the sign next time. Do you agree that what I have written here is a true and accurate account of what has been said? Sure. Sonny and Tommy each received a $250 fine for having undersized snapper, and Greg gets to return 10 very small fish to the sea.